But that don't deal with spiritual matters. You understand what I'm saying? God has dealt to each man a measure of faith. That's the faith that it takes you to believe that he died on the cross and saved you. Because look, in our generation, we weren't there. We're taking the word of God and believing. How? By faith. Without that faith, we wouldn't believe it. There's no reason to believe it because we're in the world. Do you understand how the flesh and the spirit fight each other and being in the world doesn't help you? God has given us a measure of faith so that we can believe our salvation, that Jesus died on that cross. We weren't there, but we believed by faith. What did Jesus say? And I'm trying to remember that he talked about, he said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Mm -hmm. Now think about all those over there. They saw it. But we weren't there. We believed by faith that all those things happened. We believed the Word of God and what it says. So we've been given a measure of faith, and that's that's the measure of faith that I want us to tap into. Mm -hmm. That's the heavenly force that we have in faith, because God gave it to you. God gave you that faith. And now, I want you, and I said this, all those who have surrendered to Christ is given a measure of faith by God. And now understand this, this is a gift from God. And not because you earned it. You didn't earn it. Salvation, did you have to earn salvation? No. It was given to you. It's a gift from God. So you got to understand, you got to, what? Receive it. It is a gift that God God has given you, a measure of faith to receive. It's yours. It's a gift. You didn't do anything to deserve it. God has given us a powerful faith to sustain us in life. Now, understand this. It's so powerful that even a small amount of faith, as small as a mustard seed, Mm -hmm. can move a mountain. Y'all heard that, right? The measure of faith that God gave you. Use it. It can move a mountain. Now, we're not talking about actually moving a big... We're talking about situations, circumstances, problems in life. Okay? Those are your mountains. That's what's in front of you and you have to overcome it. And so that small measure of faith, as small as a mustard seed, can move a mountain. Just think about it. And God gave it to you. Or you use it. And that, that's what this, is, this sermon series is about. For you to understand that faith that you have in you, God gave it to you. God gave it to you because you believed in His Son. He gave to each man a measure of faith. But not every man. Before we go on, we need to understand that not all men have faith. Only those surrendered to Christ and born again who have made Him His Lord have this faith. And I'm going to show it to you in Scripture. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians. The Scripture tells us not all men have faith. So what does that tell us? It tells me that not everybody's going to make it to heaven. Because not all men have faith. You got to have that faith from God to believe that you're saved. Do you have eternal life? And if you ain't surrendered to Christ, God, God ain't gave you that faith. You understand the importance of this? And now look at it so you don't, don't think that everybody has faith. What did I tell you? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. You said Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 3. Verse 2. And the King James, it kind of starts in the mid-sentence. And so I'm going to read verse 1. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, just as it is with you. Then he said, And that you may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, Then it says, for not all have faith. 
They may call themselves a believer, but they don't have that God faith in them until they surrender to God. So not all men have this measure of faith. So I just wanted to point that out so you've seen it. Here the word says not all men have faith, but every born again man has that measure of faith given by God. For us to begin to use this force of faith, we need to start speaking faith-filled words. Amen. You understand that? What kind of words do God, does God use? Faith-filled words. Everything He spoke was with faith-filled words. And that's what we need to start doing. We need to use that faith, that, that measure of faith that God has given us, but it has to be with faith-filled words. Jesus spoke and said to us to speak to our circumstances and believe in our hearts and not doubt that those things we say will come to pass and we will have whatever we say. Turn with me to Mark 11. We can see it in Scripture. You, you have a measure of faith. God has given you. Now look what he told us right here in Mark 11. And everybody's familiar with this. We've heard it time and time again. <clears throat> now, I'm going to read this, but I want to give you a little bit of insight as to what's going on here. Now, Before we, got, we get to those verses, remember Jesus was walking and then he saw a fig tree far away and wanted some food. So when he got to the fig tree and didn't see nothing on it, what did he tell us? He said, Lo, let no one eat fruit from you again. And he walked off. He kept walking, right? So when he walked, what did he do? He kind of like, he cursed that tree. He spoke faith-filled words to that tree. Because on the way back, verse 15, look at it. So they came to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple. No, I'm sorry, go to 20. That's where he talks about it. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree. Remember, he had he went to, he saw the fig tree, he told them it was going to dry up, and now look what happens. In the morning they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. What did he do? He spoke faith-filled words mm -hmm. to, that, to an abstract object, to a tree. Now think about it. They were faithful. And, and the thing that you need to understand is faithful words, you have to believe. Not doubt. Believe what you say and don't doubt it. If we speak God's word and not doubt it, we'll receive. You understand? Or, or, um, hopefully, well, we'll continue. So then now they see the fig tree all dried up. And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For more surely I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Now watch what he tells you here. This is, this is what you got to do. And do not doubt in his heart. So if you say, mountain be removed, don't doubt in your heart. But believe that those things he says will come to pass. And you will have whatever he says. Moreover, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. What kind of faith are you going to have to have? Mm -hmm. Faith filled words in order for you to speak it forth and believe and not doubt in your heart. And you're going to have whatever you want. Jesus did it. He's our example. We're to do the same thing he did. I'm not going to go around cursing trees, but if you want to, you can. <laughs> Mm 
the force of the force of faith is to say whatever things you ask for when you pray. You must believe and not doubt, and you will have them. That's what the force of faith will do for you. Say it, believe it, and don't doubt it. And it will happen. Now, one thing I need to say about this, and you may be thinking, oh man, that's super cool. Well, this doesn't mean you can continue to speak any way that you want. Okay? You can't go around just speaking all kind of which ways that you want. Now, it doesn't mean you can continue to speak any way you want and then in time of need expect to exercise the force of faith in God's Word. You can't be just talking all kinds of nonsense all the time and then when something happens then all of a sudden I'm going to speak words of faith and it's going to happen. No, no, no. It ain't going to work that way. You need to start developing. Stop saying those idle words. Quit saying foolish things. Quit talking negative. If you are to receive whatever you say, you must believe and speak faithful words, so you should start speaking them all the time. That's the kind of vocabulary that you should have. Faithful words. Well, don't be going around saying, I can't do this, and I can't do that. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to pay for that. Those are not faithful words. All those are negative. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Those are faithful words. Not walking around saying everything that you can't do. Does Christ live in you or doesn't he? Do you have that measure of faith in you or you don't? See, it's going to take an adjustment on our part. It's not going to happen overnight. But the minute that it starts happening, then everything you start saying is going to start happening because they're faithful words. You start to speak. God answers. God heard it. He does it. He does the work. You spoke because you believed. Now, a lot of people speak. They don't even believe what they speak. You have to be a person that believes what you say in your heart. Those are the type of words that you need to speak. Mm -hmm. Not negative stuff. Negative speaking has no place in your faith. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Jesus always spoke, and what he spoke always happened. Mm -hmm. His words were filled with faith. He always received what he needed from God. The same thing will happen to you. But you're going to have to change the way you speak. That negative speaking and that idle and, and silliness, it's got to go away. You ain't got no room. How can God take you seriously if you're always joking around and saying superstitious things, saying negative things? God ain't going to do it. Jesus didn't walk around telling jokes, though we do it at times. And nothing's wrong with it, but understand, correct your vocabulary. So, if you're to receive whatever you ask when you pray, you must speak faithful words.